we have been going through these lines uh, quite a clip, and we have arrived at the Tory. And the Tory, and I, I distinctly remember I was roughly 2100 in the United States Chess Federation rating system, and I had a streak of about in 10 games with black of D4, D5, and the Tory was played against me in 7 out of 10 of those games. Now, that was mostly from players between 1600 and 1900 rating, but I think it says something that it's one of those safe openings that you can play that can transpose into many things, and players are looking for a non-theoretical game when they play it. The sad news for them, we're going to be ready for it, and we're going to take it to them. So let's go ahead and, and dive right in. And we're going to be facing the Tory with the most aggressive line I can give to you. After bishop g5, knight e4, already put in the question to the bishop. Bishop h4 and c5. Very aggressive. And this is going to start our theme where we desire our queen to be able to go to b6, bother b2, and we're going to have very, very easy and systematic development. So this is the only line where white is stopping us from doing that with d-take c5. And I believe this is the only variation in the entire book where you're going to see a fianchetto for black. And this is because of the space left behind after knight c6, g6, where we're eyeing this b2 pawn as a weakness. If the queen can't do the job, there is another. After knight bd2, knight takes c5. I want to keep that tension. And after knight b3, bishop g7, as the c5 knight is protected tactically, as knight takes c5 is met by the simple queen a5, giving a bother to the wayward c5 knight and the king on e1. So after c3, knight e4, we're not in the trading business. We like the tension in this position. Bishop d3, and if you want to trade, you're going to be giving up that good bishop. D takes e4, and at this point, we have the bishop pair in an open position. We don't mind if this trade is taking place as we picked up time, and we're already close to consolidating. So queen takes d8, rook takes d8, and we get an open file to boot with everything else that's going on, and I'm looking at ideas like a5, and I'm going to keep pushing the a pawn until it hurts him. So, I think this is a good way to start off the Tory. The b2 pawn is a target as that c1 as bishop is leaving initially. Get after it. So, coming back, bishop g5, knight e4, tickle on the b. He keeps the tension. c5, and we're going after the, the aggression. We're going after the space. c3. A solid attempt because queen b6 is going to be met with another queen move. And when we see the queen on c1, you want to think, I want this rook on c8 to eventually bother this queen and have some discoveries. Memory marker. So let's go ahead and clip on d4. Do not forget about the b here. He's under attack. So we're simply going to go knight c6, and we're continuing pressure on the d-pawn. So when he defends, the best square for the bishop is f5. And after knight c3, we're worried about our d5-pawn, e6. After bishop e2, most aggressive square for the bishop is d6. And on castles, rook c8. And white's going to be required to move the lady again from c1 to avoid potential tactics.